finesse. All right, all right. Last progression, right, in that gymnastic strength conditioning in the overhead position. What we're looking to do is take that person from the jackknife off the box, get them comfortable with walking and loading their body uh, against the wall, and then actually trying to kip, kick up into the wall. Now, you are going to be managing a lot of fear, a lot of fear issues, a lot of coordination. People have never done this before. They hadn't done it in years. So what I like to do is remind people not to be so invested in the handstand. Just play around at first, and then that play gets them a little bit more comfortable to freely kick up into the position because it is a really aggressive way to go upside down, right? So let me just give you a few um, visuals and then Kevin and I will walk you through the kicking up into the position. So basically, we want people comfortable in kicking one leg up to the wall, right? But then it turns out into a game of kicking the wall. We want to be able to keep the legs straight. A lot of people will come down, right? Should kind of look, should kind of look like this, right? People are going to bend and try to do whatever they can to touch the wall, right? We want them to be able to kick up into this wall, right? getting into the wall, not over an arch at the back, nice and tall, and then come back down. You can do that for reps, you can do that for a time, five seconds, can they organize themselves? But basically, that's the easy part, is getting someone, once they're there, to manage the time they're on the load, you know, can you get into a, 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 a handstand push-up. Getting them from being here to kicking up on the wall, that's where our work needs to be done, is getting them rhythmically, hey, just, just kick up, right? And feel that little bit of inertia. And as they start to really kick up, they'll get greater levels of inertia, but I'm only worried about this one leg, the straight leg. And then once they start to hit the wall regularly, they can start trying at least to get that second leg up. And then we can kind of modify what their position is, head through, arm straight, and then come back down. That is going to be difficult for a lot of clients. Kicking up, I try to keep it rhythmic. Kick up with the leg straight and down. Kick up with the leg straight. And really, be more playful than, you, you know, on a set of three, on the fourth one, come up. That's going to be sometimes very difficult because you're managing fear, fear of injury, never being upside down, having never done it. You're really going to have to walk this person very slowly. So if they don't get it, great. Just have them continue to be rhythmic, continue to keep that leg straight. For your population that will hit that overhead position, right, that handstand position, Kevin's going to walk us through what we want to see once the person kicks up into the position. So just try the uh, free handstand. Oh, right. So what was great, right? The big thing is that he was super active the whole time through that. Um, one of the things that say is that if someone's crashing more than once or twice, you kind of got to pump the brakes for them so they don't hurt themselves or take someone else. Just get them to say, hey, let's practice this step. Let's try the pike over and over until you feel more comfortable. The efforts there are great, but remember safety is like our biggest concern is just keeping them in the right place for whatever drill they need to be working on that day. Um, because if that fear mechanism takes over, you just want to pull them back for a second. So I'm super comfortable getting my hands really close to the wall. In general, what is your cue for how close the hand should be to the wall? Will is correct. The closer to the wall is going to be the more flexible you are. Usually for like the average, we say like six to eight inches, so about like a, like a, a pace about a foot away from most people, especially the tighter their shoulders, the further away they're gonna be. 
Um, the max, I would say, is a foot away, right? Is that a foot? They're going to be leaning too far. They're going to be at that rainbow position with the lower back. Exactly what we want to avoid in all those positions, that over, <laughs> right, or the hyperextension of the low spine. Yeah, so if you had a girl with super great flexibility, she would probably be more comfortable closer to the wall. Um, the tighter, bigger guys are going to try to be too far away. So it's, it's something you're going to have to coach through. It. About six to eight inches is ideal. Uh, so we're just going to go through that same kip up. Uh, he feels pretty comfortable with it. He'll probably nail it on that first try. The biggest thing, before you go into a free handstand, right, you just want to make sure Will's locked. He doesn't want to hit the wall and then pull his feet off and see if he can stick it. So once he's locked in and really the same thing, I can't pull his hips any higher, he's going to split his legs just like he did on the kip up. But now he's going to let one leg drag him off the wall. He's not even on the wall here, ladies and ah, gentlemen. Will! That was great. I mean, that was a second or two, right, where he had full extension, he was locked, he's weightless. The tough part is, is that when you get weightless, you're going to start losing and shifting left and right. Um, so something you're not going to be able to see in the video is he's going to be constantly shifting the weight on his fingers and his palms. We do it on our feet, standing all day. We just don't realize because we're always on our feet. Um, so Will looked great. I'd say if anything, just maybe slower with that one foot, just to see if he had more control over when he was actually completely off the wall. Um, but other than that, guys, right, lock it in in the handstand. If they feel comfortable there for a second or two, see if they can split their legs by pulling one foot off the wall gradually, because you don't want to push off the wall hard. You're going to just shoot off every time. So Will is reaching for the sky, and one foot's going to gradually pull him off. You're probably going to want to move the head a little bit forward or back to, as a counterweight, um, but it's going to be a constant game of counterbalance that whole time. And we're talking about experience, right? If you start telling a new client, hey, move your head forward and back, they might not understand what you're talking about until they've you know, been in this position where they kind of almost arrested themselves away from the wall and felt at, at least that moment of, I got it balanced, right? We have the good fortune of having some people that can actually stick it. So what I do, if you find that one person in class is killing it, I ask them to pretend that I'm the wall. So that I put this guy here, and once they kick up to it, and because they've kicked up to it many times on one shot, right? They're fairly proficient in getting vertical, right? They've overcome the fear, they've gotten the technique, the technique now that I use is that I pretend to be a wall in front of them and behind them and if they hit my if they hit their feet onto my hand that's one wall and I challenge them to come off that wall but I'm always spotting them so that they can find their balance point I'm gonna ask Kevin to spot me and I'll show you on the profile what this looks like right so Kevin is going to stand here and I'm going to go yeah, so I kick up. I always like to stand on the side of the leg that's going up straight, right? I'm here. I'm down here. I kick up just like any other time. I'm kicking up to the wall. I am trying to hit Kevin's hand on the wall. gradually trying to stay in this glass box. And I might help him a little bit just so he can feel that, right? It's not that he's not doing it, but I'm just helping him stay up in that position longer oh. and see if he can start to feel how much uh, just full body activation for that to stand on your hands. I find when I'm walking through progressions, the biggest component that even people who are really, really strong is once you're upside down, this normal back curvature has to go away, right? Because remember what the gymnastics hollow is, squeezing the butt, you're gonna lose your little back curve a little bit, right? And so once you're inverted, it seems like it just, you're just upside down, neutral spine. Neutral spine when you're upside down, when you tighten up your butt, slightly flattened low back. Totally hard to feel, again, if you can't practice it, if you can't demonstrate it, 
don't teach it until you're completely comfortable with it, right? We want to give people every opportunity to access these things in their training, right? These protocols in training, gymnastic strength, you know, absolute strength, Olympic, Olympic lifting. But if you can't detail it for them, you can't show them what it looks like, stick to things that you can work on those things, but stick to things that you're highly proficient at because that puts you in a position to win versus getting into a position where you're not comfortable teaching a modification or, God forbid, injuring a client just by saying, we're going into overhead presses, go. All right? We want to stay completely out of uh, the zone of, I think this is okay, you want to be able to manage that with a high de degree of proficiency and competency because we're going to ask the client to progress themselves in that same criteria. You're looking good, can you take the next step? Okay. If all else fails, for fatigue, for uh, uh, the sake of moving the class and being progressive, someone's not getting it, Kevin, I'll grab some dumbbells. Can we talk about the Elsa shoulder press? Elsa strict press, absolutely. Um, so say they have all the abilities to go inverted upside down with the wall walks or something, but it could just be a fear. A lot of people just, uh, especially adults, right, we're just not on our hands as the kids are, are fearless about doing cartwheels and that stuff. So say someone just, hey, I don't like doing the, uh, uh, the else uh, the uh, the pike push-up the wall walk the jackknife positions This would be raw strength of your shoulders to get better at this stuff. So the L sit right? You're locking it in. I'm flexing my legs into the ground I'm leaning forward because if you think you're vertical, you're probably leaning back So there's the perfect L and then there's nowhere to cheat for this strict press and uh, this is something I've worked on a lot myself. Yeah, I could even try to be as vertical as He's possible. straight as now. And lock those elbows by my ears, right? This is gonna show a lot of weaknesses that are either through my core or my flexibility and my range of motion. Um, so what we do with a lot of people is sometimes put the box in their back, right? Hey, someone's leaning back to try to get to this extension. Just lock them in, same L-sit. Um, make sure their legs are not bent, right? You want that locked against the ground, back into that strict press position, and they'll definitely show where they're tight or where they're trying to cheat, um, or especially where they're lacking in strength for the shoulders and arms. This is a great progression, right? Or a great regression, modification, to keep you in the realm of what we're trying to do, right? We want to live into, in that gymnastic strength training, you have a client who's just having a hard time kicking up, jackknifing, for any reason, right? It's irrelevant. Get them to the L-sit shoulder press so that they can at least continue training in the movement of the day, right? We're doing gymnastic strength training. This is a great progression if they're fatiguing, if they lack, you know, mobility in the shoulders, mobility in the hamstrings definitely get them in a position to win so they can stay you know in the workout versus making a wholesale change that will pull them out of the movement pattern you know being anywhere near uh, familiar with the movement pattern that we're trying to, to teach all right guys stay tuned awesome